Hello and welcome back to another Python tutorial. In today's video, we're gonna start a series that's gonna be multiple videos long. We are gonna be seeing how to cluster stocks in Python using the k-means algorithm. So this is part of our machine learning series and kind of keeping with the theme, we are doing more financial data. In our previous videos that related to machine learning, we saw how to do uh, linear regression, we saw how to do multiple regression, and now we're moving on to some of the clustering algorithms. So let's kind of give some background and kind of understand maybe why we want to do this particular algorithm and kind of what type of problem it's designed to solve. So imagine you maybe work at some kind of wealth management firm or some kind of financial firm and you were just given a massive set of data. And this particular data set contained a bunch of stocks and along with each stock, you had maybe 50 or 40 columns of different metrics. So maybe things like return on assets, return on investments, uh, you know, what is it? Market capitalization, EBITDA, all sorts of different financial metrics. And, you know, maybe your manager comes along and says, hey, can you create some structure with all of this data? So we don't really know kind of what structure there is, but we need to kind of break it into certain groups and be good, bad, and you know, you know, below average or whatever it is, you know, but you've got to be able to break it into groups. And so naturally you start about the task and you go, well, let's look on Google. Let's see what goes on. And so naturally you start going on Google and before you know it, you come across this concept called clustering and you begin to realize that there are multiple algorithms out there that are designed to take this huge data set and basically break it into chunks. And more importantly, these types of chunks are supposed to be optimized so that way they're balanced and they're, they're basically based on similarity. So if one uh, element is part of another group, those particular elements in that group are supposed to be similar in some way. And naturally, you, you dig a little bit deeper and something you come across right away is this algorithm called k-means. k-means is a very popular machine learning algorithm and with the goal with k-means is we take this unlabeled data set. So this is a data set that we haven't provided a category. We haven't provided it a group. We don't tell it really what data point each group, it, each data point, what group it belongs to. So we feed it this unlabeled data set. And basically what it spits out to us is this structured data set that's broken into different groups. And this kind of concept is called unsupervised machine learning. It's unsupervised because I am not providing the label or group to the algorithm. I'm not supervising it in that way. I'm just feeding this unsupervised uh, data set and it will go out and break it into the sets of groups that we want it to do. So that's really the idea behind it is we have this unlabeled data set. We want to basically find some structure behind it or maybe we believe there's some structure behind it. And so we use the k-means algorithm in order to create structure from it. So how does this particular algorithm work? Well, I could get kind of into the mathematical stuff, but let's break it down into steps. And then from those steps, we're gonna see a visual example. All right, so for k-means, again, just reiterating, it is an unsupervised machine learning algorithm. And the goal of k-mean is to divide n data points, so basically every row in your data set, into k partitions. That's where k comes from in k-means. k, you have to tell it um, in a sense of, you have to know in a sense how many k's that you think is the optimal numbers. Now we'll see there's kind of ways to help us choose k, but there's not really this for sure way that works every time and it's gonna be perfect all the time. So we take n data points and divide it into k partitions where the sum of the distances is minimized. That is the key part about this algorithm. It's trying to find the whole group where the sum of the distances from this, what we call the special point called the centeroid, uh, compared to all the other data points. And so broken into steps, we basically randomly select these centroids, I mean, they could be anywhere, they could be a data point or they don't have to be a data point, but we basically randomly select these cluster centers. We calculate the distance of each point, so each data point to a cluster, 
and we assign a cluster label where the Euclidean distance is the smallest. And we'll see that technically you can use other distance measurements. Now we're just going to stick with Euclidean in this video, but technically there's other ways to do it. When we get to recommendation engines, we'll, we'll see that. And then after we've assigned it, we recompute the centroids by taking the mean of all the data points assigned to that cluster, and we basically just nudge that centroid. We repeat the step until one of these following two conditions are met. The sum of the distance is minimized, or B, the maximum number of iterations has been reached. So there's two conditions where we can stop this algorithm. All right, so I have this nice little visual. Uh, I'll put a link uh, in the video below, but I, I thought this was great. I mean, this just kind of drives home the point. I'm gonna refresh the page. Um, you can see here, basically what it's doing is it's assigning the centroids and it's calculating. So it's basically measuring the distance to each data point uh, from that centroid and then it adjusts it and then it's going to recompute it again and then it's going to adjust it and it's going to move it again and then it's going to keep doing this until it finds that location where the sum of the distance has been minimized so that's kind of the important part so we can see here that basically it created three real groups from it and so it, it just keeps going through this iteration process. I think this is a great visual. And the nice thing is if you refresh it, it actually, um, it starts with a different point each time. So it's really cool. But I, I think, again, this, this kind of just drives it home where it, it's, it's calculating that distance from each centroid to each data point. It adjusts it. So that's where it's taking that average, like we were saying, and then it's nudging the centroid to the, to the middle, basically, of that new group. And then it keeps doing that until it's found that particular partition. So very useful. Okay, so with that being said, um, we're going to be using a bunch of libraries. Naturally, we're going to be using uh, Pandas. We're going to be using sklearn. sklearn has a fantastic library of machine learning algorithms. You're going to love them. We're going to be using matplotlib to visualize a lot of our data. And I'm actually going to introduce a new um, plotting library. It's called Yellowbrick. Uh, this is really going to come in handy when it comes to analyzing and evaluating our model. Uh, they have some pretty cool charts that we can leverage. And then we're also going to be using the request library. Reason why is we're actually going to uh, leverage some of the APIs that I've worked with in other videos. And in this particular video, um, we're going to be using the TD Ameritrade API in order to get all of our financial metrics. Um, I know for some people, you might not have access to TD Ameritrade. So I will be making sure to put up a data set along with this video. So, you know, unfortunately, you know, that that's the situation because usually finding financial data, it's not hard, but making sure it's clean and everything like that and making sure it's consistent uh, can sometimes be a little bit challenging. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write down just a couple of our libraries. Uh, the first one is our request library, obviously, for our API. Um, and then naturally, we're going to use pandas in order to store this information that we get from our API uh, into a data frame. And then this one, this is just a, a Python file that stores my API keys. Um, so let me show you the stock file, and then I'm probably going to cut the video. I'm going to try to keep these relatively short. So right now, all this is doing is it's going to read a particular CSV file that I have in my system. All it is, is it's simply a, a list of stock symbols. And I'll show it to you so I actually um, have it somewhere if I had it up, but I don't. <laughs> so we're at 1500. It's pretty cool. I was really excited about that. It's last couple of months have been like picking up. It's awesome. Um, but I hope you guys like this one. I, I think you'll like it, especially you finance people out here. So basically, it's really simple. It's just a CSV file. You can tell there's one column of data. And there is something like 5,000, oh, I don't need that last one. There's like 5,800 stock symbols in here. Now, TDA Ameritrade does not have every single one of these stocks in their system, but they have a good chunk of them. And so really all we're gonna do is we're just gonna request each one of these. And I'm gonna show you how to do it into chunks. So you can actually request multiple stocks at once. I did up to like 100 at once. So that way we're not sitting here forever going like, oh my God, this thing is just never going to end. So with that being said, um, let's load the data into our particular uh, 
what is it, into our Python notebook. Okay, so right here, all this is doing is it's gonna read that CSV file, nothing fancy, I'm just providing the file path, and then it's gonna store it in a data frame like this. Um, there is actually a couple transformations that we do need to do, and, and really the simple one is just removing this little caret character. Um, it is not recognized by the API, and so we gotta change that. So what we're gonna do is it's gonna load a data frame. There's only one column, it's called symbol. So I'm just gonna grab that column, and then I'm gonna uh, transform it a little bit. So I'm just gonna say, hey, uh, stock symbols data frame, and then I'm gonna put in symbols, and then I'm gonna convert that to a string, and then I'm gonna do a replace. And so what I'm gonna say is replace, if you see this stupid little carrot, carrot where is it? Where is it? Oh, there it is. If you see that carrot hat, uh, just make sure to replace that with an empty space. We cannot have that in our request, unfortunately. So remove the uh, bad character, that's what I call it. I guess I could say the bad carrot, but that's not really cool, I guess. Who knows? Okay, and then from here, let's just display the shape. And so we'll say display uh, stock symbols dot shape. Oh, this is already a good sign. Mm. Oh, it's because I had an S at the end. Okay, perfect. And so we can see there was 5,807 rows and there's only one column of data. So uh, pretty good at this point. I think that's enough to kind of uh, make a useful algorithm at the end of the day. So uh, I'm gonna cut the video here. Uh, in our next video, we're gonna be working with the API, getting the data, transforming it, and then we're gonna go into actually doing some plotting. So thanks again for watching everybody. We'll see you in that next video.